about module 3.4, which is all about like system memory, hard drive, stuff like that. Uh, I am not on screen today. So this is the last time you're gonna see my smiling face. Uh, but let me know if this format works for you. And I mentioned this at the end of the video as well. Um, but I wanna know if this is okay to do. You know, having me, I'm, I'm very much like a talk with my hands person. Um, some people find that distracting. So this is just a test uh, just to see if this format works where it's just more of a lecture style, me talking over slides and stuff. So leave a message in the comments below if you liked this or did not like this with uh, not having me on screen. But let's get into the video. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about storage devices. We are in module three, unit number four. Okay, so we're getting towards the end there. We're getting there. We're almost done. So what's the biggest takeaway for this module? Well, that is contrasting the difference between non-volatile and volatile storage types. Well, let's break that down a little bit, okay? So volatile, I think of like Voldemort or bad things when I think of volatile storage. And it's bad if you lose all of your stuff, right? So with that, um, volatile storage is going to be you lose everything when the power goes out, okay? Non-volatile storage means if the power goes out, everything's going to be okay. It's saved. It will work when the computer comes back on. Where our volatile storage, that information is going to be gone. Okay, if you lose power, you lose it all. Okay. We're also going to talk about different types of memory modules that are used in PCs and kind of what the purpose of in of memory is in the kind of computing system. And then we're going to talk about different types of non-volatile or long-term storage. So HDDs, solid state drives, optical drives, and stuff like that. So let's get kicked off with our system memory, okay? System memory is also called RAM or random access memory, okay? So the RAM that we have in our computer is the memory that we have in our computer. So what exactly is the purpose of memory or or ram okay i like to think about a this in the form of an amusement park okay so go with me here for a minute it'll all make sense so actually getting into the car on the roller coaster that is our cpu okay so that's where all the magic's going to happen when you're standing in line to get onto that roller coaster that is our RAM or our system memory, okay? So if we have a, you know, a lot of storage or a lot of temporary storage, basically that means once the, you know, cars are opened up, people get off the ride, that means we are able to get on the ride much faster, okay? So the temporary storage on a computer is a line in which we are queuing up in order to um, to go on to the ride itself. Okay, so it is our temporary storage before the actual CPU or the number crunching happens, okay? System memory is in fact volatile, so if the power goes out, then you lose everything that is um, saved in that storage medium, okay? so. If you're in the middle of a project and you lose the power and the computer dies, then you're going to have to restart that project when you, know, you start back up. Okay. Some of the most common um, memory vendors that are out there are Kingston and Crucial and Corsair, um, as well as PNY. Those are our most common vendors. Okay. So when it comes to RAM and you know what options are available. The two big ones that you need to know are DIMMs or dual inline memory modules. That's going to be the full size for computers. And then there's a smaller one which are called SO DIMMs. Okay, so regular DIMMs are ones that go in computers. They're about, I don't know, four, four and a half inches long, where our SO DIMMs are about two and a half to three inches long. And most of the time when we get a new memory format, like right now we're on DDR5 when it comes to system memory, um, both desktop and laptop memory or DIMMs and so DIMMs come out at the same time, okay? So with our um, SD RAM, um, there are 
basically every time a new version comes out, it just gets a little bit faster. So it just allows us to get on that ride a little bit quicker than it did before. Um, right now, the standards are DDR4 and DDR5. Um, those are the ones that are available today. And when you're buying a computer, you have to make sure that you look at what um, type of memory it supports to make sure that those two things are gonna work together. So if you get this awesome brand new motherboard and you get DDR3 memory, well, it's not going to work, okay? Uh, so you have to make sure that, just look at the documentation on your actual motherboard and make sure that those two things are lined up. So let's talk a little bit about hard disk drives or HDDs, okay? So hard disk drives are our long-term non-volatile storage. So quick check on learning. What does it mean if storage is volatile versus non-volatile, okay? If you need to know that answer, you can hit rewind and check again. Um, but hard disk drives are in fact non-volatile. And with hard disk drives, uh, we're talking about the ones that have the little platters inside. It's like a little um, record player, if you're familiar with what that is. Let me grab my pen here. So inside here, we have these little disks that are spinning around, okay? And then we have this arm that is going this way and this way, reading that data, okay? So once it finds that data, um, then it'll send it through our SATA connection. So that's this little um, section right down here. That is our Sable SATA data connection. Uh, more specifically, that guy right there is the data. This right here is actually the power. So basically that um, reading head goes back and forth as those disks are spinning very, very quickly, okay? And you might find that, you know, it's a lot slower than what you're used to. And that's the trade-off when it comes to hard disk drives. So you might be asking, well, TJ, then why, why even use a hard disk drive? Like, is it just obsolete technology? Um, not yet, okay? So it's really cheap to get a lot of hard disk drive storage. Okay, so if you have an application where, you know, you need a lot of storage and speed isn't really a consideration, so like long-term storage of like photos and stuff like that, um, then yeah, hard disk drives are going to be the best. If you're talking about the actual operating system itself, um, then, then that's what we're going to talk about on that next, uh, the next section, which is solid state drives. Okay, um, those ones are very, very fast. Um, with hard disk drives, uh, because data was saved kind of all over, I mean, I want you to visualize this for a minute. You take a plate and you spin it around super fast and then you just drip ketchup on it, okay? The ketchup being our data. The chances of you having those bits of data in the same place every single time is few and far between, right? So that's why back in the day we used to have to defrag or defragment our hard drives which means we took pieces of data that went together and actually put them together so you could read a lot faster. With solid state drives, we don't do that, okay? We don't need to do that. Uh, we know exactly where all the data is on our solid state hard drives and it's all together and it's much faster. Where hard disk drives, you had those spinning platters so it took a while to, um, it took a while to get that data. So when it comes to you know, connecting these hard disk drives. Um, most of the time we're gonna use SATA or serial ATA. Um, that was what I was showing you on that last screen there. Um, you can also use uh, USB or Thunderbolt or also known as USB-C in more modern applications of Thunderbolt. And that's where you actually take the hard drives, they go inside an enclosure and you can um, access them that way. Uh, but the most common is serial ATA. We don't really see ATA anymore or IDE, also known as parallel, which was like a wider ribbon cable. Um, I haven't seen those in like 15-ish years. Um, SATA, I want to say, is like 8 megabits per second. Um, so, or eight, 8 gigabytes per second. 
8 gigs, 8 gigabytes per second, sorry. Um, it's super early. It's like 5.30 in the morning here. Um, so you're going to want at least USB 3.1 uh, in order to have fast data transfer with those. All right, moving on to our solid state drives. Um, now, we're not going into like the... There's another type of solid state drive. It's an M2, which goes right on the motherboard. Um, these are more of our traditional solid state drives. Um, and the tech, the new Tech Plus version that'll be coming out soon, um, those ones are, you know, we'll go more in depth with those. Um, when the ITF came out, those were still a little bit newer. Um, but an M.2 actually screws into the motherboard directly. You don't use like power and cables like we do with our solid state drives. Um, but with a solid state drive, it's the form factor of a traditional hard drive. So you'll notice that we still have our SATA data connector and we still have our SATA power connector on there. Um, they have the same format that the traditional hard drives do. So this is the same size as a traditional laptop drive in the past. Um, so the only thing that was really changed is how we access our data. Okay. So on this solid state drive, we have coordinates basically, and that'll be A1, that'll be B1, that'll be C1, et cetera. And then when data comes in, it's basically put just in that sector, okay? So we know exactly where it is, so we can quickly, let's say we need that piece of data, we can go in here and we can grab it and it'll be quick and easy to access, okay? So instead of that, you know, catch up on a plate and spinning and all that, where it would be really hard to get your data together, we know where all the data is on a solid state drive. There's no moving parts, okay? So if you drop a laptop that has a solid state drive, chances of you losing your data are much lower than if you had a, had a traditional HDD. And I worked at Geek Squad back in the day when we had you know regular hard drives inside of computers, and that was the most common thing that people came in for when it came to laptops was, you know, they dropped it or, and it didn't even have to drop for a very far distance, even just, you know, a foot could damage a hard drive. So, um, again, the fact that we have solid state drives now is the reason that our computers, I feel like, last a lot longer because there's not as many moving parts. Uh, when it comes to, you know, the advantages, obviously they are much faster, but when it comes to getting more storage, um, you know, terabytes of storage, it's going to be a little bit more expensive, okay? So that's kind of that trade-off. And there's good hybrid solutions out there, so you can get a 512 or a 1 terabyte solid state drive for relatively a relatively low price, and then you can have another drive in your computer that is just long-term storage, so in the desktop that I built, you know, I put an M.2 in there for the operating system. And then I put, I want to say it was like a four terabyte or eight terabyte, eight terabyte um, HDD for more long-term storage. So the other thing that we need to talk about is optical disk drives. Why do we need to talk about it? Because it's still on the ITF Plus. Literally the only reason. So as far as like actual application in the IT world, you might run into optical disk drives, and these are like CDs, DVDs, Blu-rays, um, but most of the time, you're only going to interface with those with like a USB version, so you might have a USB DVD drive just to have in case somebody brings something in like on a DVD or a Blu-ray. Um, other than like long-term backups or like backing up everything to a couple Blu-rays and shipping them off-site as like a low-cost secure-ish backup, you might see it, but honestly, we're not, we don't really use optical disk drives anymore in the real world, um, but as far as the ITF is concerned, um, you had a couple different versions of, like, DVDs that you could write to, and CDs as well, so what you need to know for the ITF Plus is if you have a dash R, that is, you know, you're able to read you know, from that, you know, write to it once and then read that information. A DVD RW, that means rewritable, okay? So you can write on it multiple times. So let's say you had a CD and you had all of your favorite songs for the month, but then, you know, Kanye drops a new album. Is Kanye still relevant? I don't know. I don't think he is. But he drops a new album and you want to add his song, 
Well, you could take that CD if it's an RW and you can rewrite it and take one of your songs out of the playlist and put a new one on there. Now, obviously that's gonna be more wear and over time, you know, it's not gonna work as well, uh, but it is, you know, the technology does have that capacity, which is pretty cool. Uh, this is what an optical drive looks like. Um, so most of the time these, you know, this is an internal one that goes into a desktop build. Um, and it'll go in your standard five and a quarter um, drive bay. Um, but most of the time we are using, um, when it comes to rewritable media, uh, we are using what you see on the screen here. And that is our flash drives or our, um, you know, our flash cards, if you will. So um, this right here, this is our kind of our most common um, flash drive and this is used for computers but even i just got the new uh, iphone 15 and it has a usb-c port so i can now use my flash drive and plug it directly into my phone which is pretty awesome um, thumb drives the prices have come down quite a bit um, so it's nothing for you to carry you know 512 or a terabyte on your keychain which is pretty neat uh, the most common uh, version of a uh, memory card is what we see here this is our SD card. It is a square with the corner kind of bitten out of it, if you will. Uh, these come in regular as well as micro sizes, and they are used for a lot of different things. So from, you know, cameras to recorders to um, just temporary storage. Um, they're also used for like Raspberry Pis to install the operating systems. Um, but the most common that is used are the SD and the micro SD cards this size. So that's what you're going to interface with, you know, on the IT side, unless you are in a creative environment. So like a graphics studio or a video studio, um, then you might use some of the um, other formats. But most of the time, these are our most common. And a lot of times, you know, I, I keep a card reader with me at all times. Um, so if a user needs something, I have it. Um, and you can see this kind of as an example here, and these come in USB-C as well. Um, but most of the time, you just need to have access to a SD card reader and a micro SD card reader, um, which are, it's usually one reader that has both. So hopefully this was helpful to you, and you are now able to know the difference between volatile and non-volatile storage. Uh, you should be able to understand the different types of modules that are used in PCs. Remember, our DIMMs are the full size. They're about four, four and a half inches long that go in desktop computers or desktop applications. And then we also have our SO DIMMs. Remember that S is in there and that stands for smaller. Um, so the SO DIMMs are what's going to be in our laptops. And then we wrapped up with understanding our volatile, or our, I'm sorry, our non volatile storage in the shape of hard drives and solid state drives, as well as optical drives and flash memory. It's worth noting that flash memory, um, solid state drives, and hard disk drives are all non-volatile storage, so if the power goes out, um, you're not gonna lose anything. You know, this does say memory here, so I didn't wanna confuse anybody. Um, those are non-volatile storage types. So hopefully this video helped you. Um, also let me know, this is the first time you know, that I haven't been on screen. I had some people suggest that I basically don't show up on screen because I block words and stuff like that. So let me know if this format worked for you. Um, if you need absolutely anything from me, please feel free to reach out in the comments or shoot me an email. Thanks for watching and have a good day.